San Francisco gatvės, video, kurį noriu pažiūrėti virš savaitės, bet dabar pažiūrėsim San Francisco gatvės, fentanilis ir panašiai, let's go. Yeah, my name is um, Dennis. I've been doing fentanyl for some years now, for about three, four, four years, five years. Here in San Francisco, it's an unseen thing, like unseen force that's taking over Frisco, I think. Everybody on hype, on Fetty, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's doing Fetty. It's the fad now. Do you use any of the harm reduction services they offer out here? Yeah, I use them. I use them to get what I get what I need, get my foil, get my tutors, get my get my shit. You know what I'm saying? Have you uh, tried to get clean before? Nah, I haven't. I haven't tried to get clean. Do you want to? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> camera a carjacking in San Francisco in broad daylight. Why is that Prius? What the fuck? Visu pirma, Andrew tiesiog pagavo gyvai tą momentą. Filmuodamas interviu su... camera a carjacking in San Francisco in broad daylight. Why is that Prius speeding away backwards? A group doing interviews for a web show saw a food delivery driver pull up to a restaurant to pick up a pizza. The driver left his car running. Someone hopped in and sped off backwards. Sir, sir. And just like that, within 90 seconds of being in San Francisco, I witnessed open air fentanyl use, a carjacking, and ended up on the nightly news. Hello, my name is Andrew Kelly, and you're about to watch our documentary, San Francisco Streets, our most in-depth project yet, which explores- Holy fuck, Rimtai! Imagine, imagine, atvarai im interviu iš žmogaus, prada narkotikus įsvartot, nu nes ten problema su tuo fentaniliu, Ir tada pizdina kurierio mašiną vietoj, visą tą nufilmuoji. Čia amazing. Ar čia kasdienybė tokia, ar žinai taip sutapo viskas. Okay, back to the streets. The victim yelling for help as a YouTuber tries to interview him. Oh, uh, that guy just went in to grab a DoorDash order and then he ran out when he saw his car get jacked. It happens that fast. Thankfully, the delivery driver's Prius was found a few blocks away 30 minutes later. Minutes later, officers arrested 52-year-old Kara Holcomb. But by then, cell phone footage of the incident had gone viral. Well, this is really chaos happening. So something needs to be done. Example, because what? of racking up millions of views and tens of thousands of comments, it would be a Prius. San Francisco is gayer than shit. If a nuke dropped on California, I would actually be happy. You get what you vote for. Thanks, Biden. Thank God I live in Florida. Why is that Jew all gas, no brakes with you? Fam, you're cheesing me. Is this shit staged? I was amused, but also puzzled. I mean, how did that video go viral so fast? So fast. And who recorded it? Jo, aš dar norėjau irgi tą pasakyti. Kokioj vat visom neš tikrųjų gyvenam, kur viskas yra filmuojama. Bet kurio momentu Visi žmonės aplinkui gali pradėti filmuoti tiesiogiai į eterį, HD, kokybę, žinai, viską. In instant. Viskas. Iš 16 skirtingų kampų. Ir nu, kaip evolucionavo visom, ne, kad viskas yra ant or pastatyta naujienos per Twitterį, per visur, kad tik kažkas atsitinka, kur dėmesio kažkiek bent verta iš karto transliuoja ir po dienos viską pamirštam. Nes atsitinka tas kitas dalykas, kuris taip pat transliuojamas. Damn. Nes jo čia iš karto tai žinai sakys, nu va kokio visuomeniai gyvenom, thanks Biden ar thanks Obama, realiai mes dabar turim problemų, visi turi savo problemų, bet blia, jį įsivaizduokit, jeigu prieš tūkstantį metų būtų tiesiog kameras turėję, kas antras žmogus, kiek mes dabar turėtumėm, kokiom sąlygom žmonės gyveno, kokie buvo, kokias buvo situacijos ir panašiai, uff, nieks net nedrystų sakyti, kad dabar visiems blogiau ten ar kažką, bet Tai nenurašo, aišku, ne pateisina problemų, kur tikrai yra ir su narkotikais, ir su fentaniliu, ir su benamiais, tenais, tikrai yra problemų, čia nieks to nepaneiks. The man who posted this video, Richie Wynn, is a San Francisco native. I'm telling you, it's always wild down here, raw. The crime has gotten out of control. 
The man who recorded the video was named Richie Wynn, a former cocaine dealer who got caught with a couple eight balls during COVID and came out of jail sober. Nowadays, he works at a nightclub and films something called the Ciroc Challenge. And sometimes, just sometimes, goes on Fox News. Uh, so Richie used to deal drugs. What's your solution to all this? Not to discuss bottle service, but rather to discuss his other videos, which basically consist of him confronting homeless people on the sidewalk. What you smoking, man? What are you guys doing out here? You shooting up right in here, bro? Is that some crack, mama? You want to do that in front of the kids, man? Clean that shit up, bro. That shit's ugly, bro. My name's Richie Wynn. Uh, basically, I'm kind of like a video vigilante, if you will. I'm kind of taking it into my own hands to film some of the things that I feel like are plaguing the city, um, mainly the drug use. Hey, bro, you know people got kids and stuff like that. You out here rolling up heroin or fentanyl? You can't be doing that right here. Have a little fucking respect, man, for people that pay rent. I don't think the children should have to see it because it's grotesque. A lot of it is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's harsh to see. It is very gruesome. Some of these individuals are Oof. suffering from also mental illness and picking away at themselves. They are shooting drugs in their neck. They are screaming about obscenities that can be triggering to somebody that is frail and, and, and is still developing. I gotta stop smoking that shit in front of the kids, man. You got the kids right here, man. What the fuck you say, man? Arrest these individuals. Take them into custody. This bus stop right here is it's the 14 Mission. Uh, last year, I shot a viral video. A group of school children were getting off of uh, that bus right there. Bye, kids. Y'all get home safe. Aš dar kartą pasakysiu, ką turbūt pasakysiu per šitą video kelius kartus ir kurie susakys daug kartų. Lietuvoje yra labai gerai gyvent, gerai. Lietuvoje yra labai gera šalis. Mes nesam tobulį, mes nesam tragiški, mes esam, sakyčiau, net, net ne per vidurį, bet Lietuvoje yra labai gera šalis. Ir, aišku, ne visoje Amerikoje taip, ne visose gatvėse taip. Ir, aišku, turbūt nuvarius kažkur ir Lietuvoje galėtų kažką panašaus rasti arba problemą kažkokią. Bet, ne, Lietuvoje yra labai gera šalis gyvent. Safe, okay? And they had to wade their way through this kind of mess that you're seeing right here, which is like an open-air drug market, you know, people using, people selling. Countless people have seen it. Uh, numerous news outlets have used it. For Richie, filming San Francisco's decay is a steady side hustle. Last year, Fox News spent $1.6 billion dollars on licensing fees. Essentially, that means acquiring the rights to content, usually scary, juicy content, engineered to generate maximum outrage and piss off their core demographic to bring more eyes to cable TV. Which is a dying platform. Yay, we get active. Democrats approve of racial violence. And in just this year alone, Fox News has licensed over a dozen of Richie's clips. It's not clear how much they pay Richie per video, but his work has been featured in multiple primetime segments. Here's a couple examples. When I was a kid, my biggest worry in school was forgetting my locker combo. Now these kids in San Francisco have this. Homeless drug addicts, after getting off the school bus, who the heck thought this was a good idea? In San Francisco, junkie have more rights than you do because liberalism spreads worse than a virus from a Chinese lab. And for the politicians that argue the fact that they think San Francisco is safe right now, go down to Civic Center and pull out your camera phone and I guarantee you will be met with some type of violence or some type of disgruntled individual. You don't need to be smoking drugs. There's children that live in this building right here. So maybe you should take it somewhere else. Come on, bro. Leave her alone, bro. Take me, bro. Who the fuck you think you talking to, punk? It's an ecosystem Ooh. that has thrived off of the illegal drug trade, the lax laws for stealing and um, uh, reselling uh, uh, stolen goods. Oh yeah, the shoplifting is is wild. Recent high-profile cases of organized retail theft have cast an ugly pall on cities like San Francisco. You know, I've seen the people come in, take whatever off the shelves, and just walk right out of it. More than a dozen Walgreens stores have shuttered. Target has limited its hours. It was happening so much here at this Whole Foods that's in my building that they had to shut down. The employees didn't feel safe. The place was only open for a year. Oh, it was only open for a year, and this was their flagship store. It was a gorgeous store. <laughs> Yeah. What's up, man? What's up, Doug? How you doing? How you doing out here, bro? I'm living the best I can. Unfortunately, I'm living in these mean streets. Yeah. I'm still alive. You've been doing drugs and shit? 
Absolutely. It's the life we live. What's your drug of choice? Crack cocaine. No, skin, fentanyl. How long have you been doing that for? About a year. What do you think like made you want to first get into it? I'm opiate dependent. I've been dependent on opiates since I was 16. Broke my leg, broke my ankle. I've been doing Percocets, Oxycontin, Big Pharma. You know, it's the biggest reason why a lot of people are addicted to these opiates, you know. The Sackler family is one of the richest families in America. The source of that wealth was for many years Oxycontin, the addictive painkiller considered one of the initial sparks for the nation's opioid crisis, a crisis that has already left more than 450,000 Americans dead and continues today. I'm dependent on it, you know, without it, I, I don't function as well, you know. How'd you break your leg? Fighting. Eu curilei că tot pe de epidemie era venit de ceau să nu cap ce problemă Americai. Dar dar că dabar ne 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 cabă pe tei tei care turietu. Dabar nu, bentiu identificavo ir jino jina ir kartais vot pakalba. Bet tas kalbėjimas ne tame lygyje, kad oh shit, ir darom kažka. O tiesiog, nu tai yra masyvi problema ir viskas. Tai, bet jo, įdomu bus, kai Amerika galų galia pradės spręs tą problemą. Nes čia masyvi problema. Čia turbūt didžiausia problema, kokia jie iš vis turi Amerikai. Ir kol kas nelabai daro kažką, nes čia blia sudėtinga. O kaip išspręst, who the fuck knows. Čia svarbiausia reikia, kad nu, pasaulis tiesiog nu, pamatytų tarp pasimokytų to, kad tokių dalykų tipo, nu, išvengti, nes čia, nu, čia yra ilgas procesas tokio dalyko. Čia kiek 40 metų tas tiesias, tipo, tai jo, bet jo yra dokumentikų visokio apie tą oks ir kaip išleido ir kaip lobistai dirbo, kiek laiko ir per kiek laiko tai nusuformavo tą visą, bet jo kaip išspręsta, čia... Tau iš pagrindų reiktų kovoti ir prieš farmą, ir prieš daug pinigų, bisnių visokių. Bet jo, nežinau. Nes tiem žmonėm, kas žina, įmano iš jūs padėt. Tiem žmonėm, kur dabar jau, nu gal kai kuriem dar, bet didžiai daugai, kas žin, tiesiog... Jo, I don't know. Tipo, nu... Rytoj tu negali nuspręsti dabar ten, kur San Francisco esi, ir rytoj nuspręsti. Mano rytoj mes darysim tą ir tą ir išspręsim šitą problemą. Tu niekaip to nepadarysi. Čia turi būti labai sisteminis, kuris nu išspręsti, nes čia yra side effectas problemos, taip gal sakyčiau. Tai reikia išspręsti problemą ir tada išnyks tą side effect problemą, I guess. Bent jau aš taip įsivaizduoju. Bet jo, jeigu tu norėtum greitai išspręsti, tu nieko nepadarytum. Kažkur išvežtum, negali to padaryti, nei, nu ką tu padarysi. Jo. O kad tą išspręsti didžiai problemą, tačiau San Franciskas vienas nieko nepadarysi, turi state lygių, tai yra, nu, visos Amerikos lygių būt, federal lygių. Making out with some fucking roid rager, so I swung on him and uh, my buddy grabbed me. I don't know what happened. My ankle ended up getting snapped on the, the stair. Have you tried to like quit before? Yeah, I, I did about uh, two and two and a half years this last run. I had my life together and uh, I ended up uh, hurting my back in the job, working in construction over in Livermore. Relapsed and uh, got evicted. Lived in my van. It became real once I lost my van. It's, 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 it's a trip. So my goal is to try to stay alive and stay, you know. I don't want to die before my mom, my mom, you know what I mean? That's my, that's my biggest goal. She shouldn't, she shouldn't have to bury her son. Where's your mom at now? In North Carolina. When's the last time you talked to her? Seven years, five, seven years. It's been a while. I'm 30, I turned 38. Does she know you're out here? No, no, no one does. Hi, Dad, hi, Mom. If you see me, I'm still alive. I know I look like shit. Lost all my teeth, but that was in, you know, I got done a fight, I got jumped, so. Honestly, bro, you don't look that bad. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. How do you get money? The boost in life, as you can see. Oh shit. Fresh licks. You said fresh licks, you said. <laughs> we got stuff to get by. Stay warm. Got some shirts. Nope. Got my J Ben and Jerry's. You know what I mean? How do you typically resell the shit that you boost? It sells itself. Everyone needs everyone loves a good deal. Yeah. I know it's not a good thing to do, but it is what it is. It's our life. We could be doing worse things. A lot of these big companies are all fucking write-offs anyways. Ice cream, how much for the ice cream? I want the ice cream. Three dollars for that one. What, what flavor is it? What flavor is it? Yo, I, I haven't tried that one. Send it, send it. I have three right now. I'm gonna eat it right fucking now once I give him the cigarettes. It is what it is. It's either that or I starve tonight. It's it's all around shitty. It's not fun. You know what I mean? I wouldn't. I, I want, I'd rather work. This shit's hard, harder than you think. You know. 
Ice cream's more addicting than fentanyl, I'm not gonna lie. If I would, if fentanyl didn't make me dope sick, I would be more addicted to ice cream. I think once I'm done and sober from fentanyl, I'm still gonna be addicted to ice cream. Is San Francisco's locking up their ice cream? Yeah, so what happened to the ice cream, bro? We had to lock the shit up, because they came in here, they started stealing all kind of shit. They came with trash bags, and that's like every night, too. So I say this, not only to the Demo Democrats that we have to fix this problem, but I'll say it to the Republicans as well. We're, we're handling, bad bitch we're, we're handling. Hey, bad bitch alert. Woo! Y'all, what's happening? What's happening? My birth certificate say female, and it do say San Francisco, but I'm homeless. Oh. <laughs> Can we talk to you? Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. So how you doing, Andrew? Good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. Okay, so my name is Miss J. Vera Williams. The last corporate job I had was Ted Baker as senior manager in 2022, making. Let the propaganda be similar to the same thing that you're going Christ. 2700 every two weeks, and that's still not being enough to, number one, solidify safe housing and to live off of. How much do you think you need a month to survive well in San Francisco? $5,000. But I'm a person that would categorize under high priority consider I have HIV. And I live at a SRO. So it's basically like temporary housing until they find new housing. Due to having HIV, Ms. J. Williams qualifies for San Francisco's single room occupancy or SRO program, which provides at risk unhoused people with access to low cost housing, usually in eight by 10 foot rooms in one of the many dilapidated residential hotels in the Tenderloin neighborhood for up to 30 days. The city calls single room occupancy buildings or SROs the last housing option before homelessness. Currently, 15,000 people live in SROs in San Francisco and their average monthly rent is $895. I just moved there. Tony Pam and their average monthly rent is $895. Aš 95. Fuck. Tas turbūt ir yra, plėt, sudėtingiausia gal suvokti, kad, nu, vat, nuvaro žmonės penkias štukas mėnesį uždirba. Nu, tipo, alga, viskas turkoja, nu, bet tada 900 už šitą, už tokį būstą, nu, ir nebelieka viskas kaip ir proporcionalu. Tai įdomu, pagal kokią metriką šiaip Pagalvoje metrika šiaip matuoja, kiek žmonės pinigų, nu, turi, yra, pla, yra ta kažkokia, e, kur, nu, išleidžiamų pinigų, kiek turi, kaip jinai vadinas, kas nors žino šitą, žino apie ką aš kalbu, kažkaip, kur yra kažkokia metrika, kur disposable tavo income, man atrodo, matuoja, ar ne apie, ne apie kamą gavę, ne apie tą kalbu, pagal kokią metriką būtų iš tikro gal normaliausia palyginti tokį maždaug, nu, tą uždarbį tipo. Nes nu jėsis, penkios štukas uždirba, nu, tai nieko nepasako, kai tu už būtų sumokė ten devynis šimtus, kai tu, nu, jo, aš nežinau. Pagalvokia metrika galėtų va taip palyginti efektyviau biškiuką. Hm. Nu, ką žinai, jūs naudingi būsit, nes jūs labai dabar kalbot apie kažką kitką, tai... <laughs> I just moved there, but I was twice physically assaulted four times due to being trans. What do you want, a room at the Four Seasons? I don't want a room at the Four Seasons. I just want a room that's safe. I got bit by a pit bull last week. I just got out the hospital oh, wow. from literally somebody saying in the Latino dialect, get that thing. and their pit bull biting me on my ankle. Well, that's just, that's, that's just because, you know, San Francisco's just gotten out of hand. Where are you from? Well, that's this. That's that's just because. Kashevico? Is prior Davi Kashevico? Ah, yeah, Tida Well, that's this. That's that's just because you know San Francisco just gotten out of hand. Where are you from? I'm from here. You're from San Francisco. Yeah, my father's. I'm from Fillmore, Hayes, and Central. I pay cash money for these titties. <laughs> Hell yeah! How much? Thirty thousand and forty-three dollars. I know it's Tyra Banks or something like that, Lord. This this is like real deal Holyfield, and it's a crack of shit. You cannot open a door to nowhere. You can't open no door. Like I could have bought a house. I could be opening a door. I could be on these streets right now. Yeah, yeah. You could buy these titties later when you buy your house and you're gonna finish your education. That's the message to the kids. Wait to buy titties after getting the master's degree. Please, all that <laughs> Botox and Rotox and Kim Kardashian. Yeah. Please wait. Uh, education. 
spirituality, and really doing the work every day. Go find me, y'all, Miss Jay Williams. San Francisco, California, Frisco. Some people say the Paris of the West. A gold rush boomtown that began in the late 1800s after the discovery of the Comstock load sent millions of Americans. Gerai, nu, pažiūrėjom 10-12-13 minučių, kas nori gyventi Kaune Vilniuje ar San Franciske, žinai. Nu, tiek jie pamatė San Francisco. Aišku, mes visi suprantam, nu, kad čia rodo specifinę vietą, specifinių laikų, žinai, specifinių žmonės toj vietoj. Nu, bet, bet jo, Jesus, fuck. Headed west. An explosion of migration from the ends of the earth. For a while, shit was going pretty good. Until 1906, when a horrific earthquake came and destroyed 80% of the city, taking 7,000 lives. San Francisco is gone. A lot of people thought Frisco was done for good, but they were totally wrong. San Francisco was rebuilt. By the mid-century, it became the epicenter of counterculture. First, the beatniks. Then, the beat poets. Then, the hippie movement kicked off, which brought over 100,000 self-described flower children to the hate ashbury aka Hashbury neighborhood, to do acid and hang out. bright idea. Macintosh, the foundational tech company that led to the boom of Silicon Valley, which brought over a thousand tech companies to the Bay Area in just yep. five years. Bay Area, Silicon Valley, and Yahoo, eBay, Dell. Dell built a desktop just for me. Intel. Microsoft. I'm Bill Gates. Facebook. Hey, how's it going? This is our first live video. Twitter. By 2019, San Francisco's GDP rose to $534.56 billion, making it the eighth largest economy in the entire world. Good news? Not really. Everything that you think that it is, is really not what it is. 344% rent hike. Neil has been paying $1,800 a month rent, but his landlady recently informed him she was raising the rent to $8,000 a month. San Francisco is a fucked up place. Yeah, it's fucked up. <laughs> it's impossible to live here. The rent is rising, minimum wage is the same, no parking. Always if you get a parking crazy. ticket, nigga, that's a, that's a whole check right there. Rent is high, food is high, tickets is high, minimum wage is the same. You need to work three jobs just to live in a in a in a one bedroom in zombie land. We can't afford to live here. I'm born and raised here and I can't even afford to live here, but I do hard work, you know, trappy. Welcome to San Francisco. A little bit of bipping here and there. Oh shit. And I make do. I make do with what I do. Mm-hmm. So you could have a job in the city, but you need other forms of income. So you need to hustle up something. You need to be doing three or four other things to survive in this city. You cannot just have one. I do nothing. I should game in the or three rounds of dinner for streaming. I should not San Francisco event. I do your own goddamn. Bet tipo, jo, yeah, Jesus, fuck, tokį gyvenimą, kur tau reikia ne tik tris darbus ir bedar ir daug dalykų daryti, kad tu galėtum išsilaikyti, nes kodėl, nes tai pasitiko, kad nu, tavo, tavo mieste, I guess, technologijos boomas buvo ir užkilo kainos nuomos ten ir panašiai, nu, rinka taip veikia, žinai, užkilo kainos 15 kartų, aišku, tu gali išsikrausti, tipo, techniškai, jeigu ten kažkada, nu bet nerealistiška tai yra, gal kai kuriem žmonėm tai realistiška, nu bet didžiai daug maitinė yra realistiška ir tu tada tokioj situacijos ir vat kai kurie tiesiog taps be namį nes niekaip, niekaip neišsispręsi tos problemos kai kurie va turės 15 darbų dirbti ir kažkaip vat suktis bet jo I don't know Techniškai turbūt socialiai teisingiausias dalykas būtų, kad tos kompanijos, kurios tam San Franciske pradėjo tos biznius ir įkūrė tos biznius ir milijardus, trilijonus užsidirbo, jos turėtų normalius mokesčius susimokėti ir kad jų pinigai tie uždirbti, nes jie naudojas to miesto ir jie realiai formuoja realiai visą tą miestą, net kainas to miesto, turėtų tos mokesčius mokėti, kurie eitų į tą miestą, tada, I guess, ir tada su tais pinigais tvarkytų tas problemas, I guess. Bet aš nežinau, ar pro... čia aš... aš net nežinau, ar problemą štai išsprendžiame atsiog metą ant pinigus, tipo, jie, yeah. jo, nežinau, čia aš sprendimo būdų jokių nepasiūlysiu, nes aš, I have no idea, bet gal tai būtų socialiai teisinga, nes jeigu va tokie biznai naudojasi to, bet dabar jau per vėlų, kaip be būtų, ne, 
Dabar jau kaip per vėl. Nes dabar tie bizniai jau, kai užaugo, jie gali bet kur perskati. Jeigu tu juos privers kažką daryti, perskatos į kitą kažkur. Tie turėtų būti grinai ne, federalinių lygių ir tada, nežinau, jie kitą šalį, kad neišvažiuotų ar neregistruotų įmonių kažkur kitur ten įvairiai. Nu, nežinau, fakt up. Kai tu turi trilijonus pinigų, tai po sunku kažkokias reguliacijas tau uždėti ir įstatymus tau pritaikyti, kai tu tiesiog viską gali apeiti, viską gali pakeisti ir nu, tu turi tą leveradžią per didelį, tipo. One job. It's impossible. Unless you're like a lawyer, you work in tech, or you would trick. Mm-hmm. Within just 10 years, rent in San Francisco nearly tripled, while the minimum wage remained the same, leading to a mass exodus of native San Franciscans. Yeah. You got San Franciscans moving to like Vegas, Texas, New York, Atlanta. And a mass influx of what are colloquially known as tech bros. This created quite a few problems. For one, many of these tech bros had no cultural or family connection to the city. Plus, they weren't really there to stay. For example, the average residency for a Twitter or Facebook employee in San Francisco is 9 to 12 months. And many of them were bussed in and out of the city by private charter buses. San Francisco, not for sale! These people angry at what they see as growing income inequality in the city. Now, before we continue, I'd like to mention that San Francisco's gentrification was not explicitly a direct result of tech. In an ideal world, big tech actually could have been good for the city. But the real Mm -hmm. culprit here is insane zoning regulations imposed by a group of lobbyists called the NIMBYs. NIMBY stands for Not In My Backyard. NIMBYs in cities like San Francisco are essentially importing suburban expectations and land use controls into central cities. So geographically, San Francisco is actually a pretty small area, which is not that densely populated. And many of the old school upper income neighborhoods like Knob Hill and Pacific Heights, which is home to the Pelosi family, Drop the hammer. are within a walking distance to the commercial heart of the downtown area. So when big tech began to arrive, bringing in hundreds of thousands of new young professionals, residents of these neighborhoods became very concerned about the potential construction of high density apartment buildings, particularly with how this would cause noise pollution with the sounds of jackhammer and forklifts and beyond, but also how the buildings might block their view of the city or the bay. So neighbors of these wealthy areas would get together every time a high-density development was proposed and say, not in my backyard, and they would lobby to get their neighborhoods protected under historical preservation status. Marking a building, corridor, or neighborhood as historic is one tool NIMBYs can use to embalm a neighborhood while feeling good about themselves. They're defending the cultural and historic character of the place. While this did serve to preserve traditional San Francisco aesthetics, it also basically froze urban development during the city's largest economic boom in history, causing home values to skyrocket and rent to rise far beyond what the median monthly income was. As a result, San Francisco experienced the most intense gentrification in American history. Black population shrunk from 14.5% to 6% of the city, and the poverty line rose so high that households making under $117,000 per year are considered to be low income. If you're a San Francisco city girl like me, born and raised, it's too crowded here now. It's too much. Very quickly, the creative class was replaced by the professional class, leaving vast subsections of the city utterly swagless. Still, California politicians didn't care. They wanted exponential growth, and for a while, it was happening. Then, in early 2020, a very hungry man allegedly ate a pangolin at a wet market in Wuhan, China, which ultimately prompted these tech companies to vacate all of their San Francisco offices in favor of a work-from-home model. At some point, these mega corporations like Twitter and Facebook figured out you can make just as much money, if not more money, having employees work from home. Not to mention, according to a recent study, employee happiness has increased by over 20% since remote work began as the industry standard for tech. We're more productive at home, we're happier at home, we're doing what the company asks of us. They were happier, healthier, and they realized something. You know, you can move anywhere and keep your Bay Area money. You know, you can move anywhere and keep your Bay Area money. Now working from home, hundreds of thousands of new San Francisco transplants had to make a choice. Should we stay in this extremely expensive, unwelcoming city full of homeless people and locals who don't like us and see us as walking emblems of oppression and displacement? Or keep the exact same job and move to somewhere like Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, where you can afford a gorgeous mountain home or Lithuania, Nashville. For the same price as a studio apartment in the Castro district. Most Californians in this position picked option two and got the hell out of town. So even after California reopened in early 2021, you want the economy to reopen permanently. These tech workers and the companies who employ them were like, man, fuck that. We're not going back to San Francisco. And some of these companies realized that emerging AI technology would allow them to cut their workforce in half. 
150,000 tech workers have been laid off in 2022 alone. We regret to inform you your position has been impacted. I called my boss back and we just sobbed over the phone. It's a Twitter bloodbath. Nearly 4,000 fired in one fell swoop. Half the global workforce. Twitter is not alone. Mass layoffs are happening across the tech world. I take full responsibility for this decision. The economy of San Francisco was collapsing in real time. Not to mention homelessness. Check it by me. Twitter it reeks man. Most latest. Oh, Shapiro, Benny Boy, latest. Latest reeks a tap or audit. And just to finish up the program today, another powerful American, but not so much of a diplomat that he thing to get. We got it. One of the parodies. If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f yourself. But go f yourself. <laughs> Is that clear? Jak je poměnět na slabý uče? Lidé s nou jeno si s Elonu Musko gevenimo. Nearly doubled during COVID. And uh, politics aside, crime responsibility for this decision. The economy of San Francisco was collapsing in real time. Not to mention homelessness nearly doubled during COVID. And uh, politics aside, crime was on the rise. As the city of San Francisco deals with the shocking high profile murder of tech executive Bob Lee, a greater question emerges. Who wants to live here anymore? Yeah, out of pocket. I knock a nigga out his socket. I don't give a fuck if you all get out of pocket. I'm not the one to motherfucking fuck with. I don't give a fuck, nigga. Yeah, I'll pull up with this witch. I'm on Cedar Block on the TLs, nigga. What you mean? For this combination of reasons, over half of San Francisco's recently built luxury apartment buildings and giant office buildings are completely vacant right now. They're actually for sale. Uh, it is um, becoming uh, the next Detroit almost. General Motors. Ford and Chrysler. It was a golden era of full employment for a triumphant America. As they grew and they became multinational companies. Detroit lost 200,000 inhabitants between 1950 and 1960. Um, you know, to where um, these tech industries have pulled out, just like the car industries pulled out of there, and we're starting to be left with like a shell of our great city and now is debilitated and shut down into something that is never going to be able to get rented out again all those tents out there they're able-bodied individuals they're being told that they shouldn't be working and they can collect general assistance and <clears throat> they can stay home and play on their phone and it is ridiculous uh, you know we need to start encouraging people to get back out to the workforce we need to start making uh, you know that like a requirement and these individuals that are coming here from Salt Lake City, uh, uh, Boise, Idaho, all these other places that San Francisco are putting a strain on our services. If they're going to come here to San Francisco, you need to be working. You can't just come here and just mooch off the taxpayers. You know, that is ridiculous. So there's ads online for people that come from other parts of the country to come here and, and get shelter. Where are you from, sir? Money. I'm from Montana. He's from Montana. See? Yeah, but, but I didn't come here for that. I live here and I work and I got a job and I got a girlfriend and we do drugs, but we're not robbing cars or fucking sucking off the city, you know, or shitting on the sidewalk. See, so there you go. There you have it. Montana, we're taking in your, your drug addicts as well. All this strain is getting put on my city, and that's why I'm a San Francisco nationalist. I, don't, <laughs> I, I, I really want what's good for San Francisco. You know, you have companies that, are, that used to have four buildings in San Francisco that now have one floor. And so all the infrastructure that's been built for this high pay is, is now sort of collapsing. You know, and then to say that the reason that San Francisco isn't doing well is because of poor people living on the street who use drugs. It's not real. It's a red herring. No, no, it's, it's, yo, it's, I'm sorry, it's a side effect of problems, bigger problems. We just did a street assessment here in the mission, 
and 73% of the people that we spoke to were previously employed and housed, okay? Where were they working? They're working in janitorial jobs, in those office buildings. All of those businesses have changed their modality, especially those, you talk about downtown being closed. Well, downtown used to employ hundreds, thousands of people who are working in, in low-level, entry-level jobs, you know, as janitors, as, you know, all the things that supported that, that business. Well, they're now, that there's no one in those buildings. Much like the gold tycoons who pillaged the West for its resources centuries ago, only to leave behind ghost towns that mark the Wild West, Big Tech has essentially used San Francisco as a playground for over two decades, and now has left behind an overpriced shell of a once great American metropolis. Anyways, the story of corporate greed is typically left out of the San Francisco conversation. All you seem to hear about on TV is that San Francisco is an apocalyptic third world wasteland. Brazen crime taking a huge toll on America's most progressive city. Full of fentanyl, petty crime, graffiti and so forth. People are being shot, stabbed, beaten, brutalized and they fornicate and they defecate and they do everything. Is this true or is this cap? Let's go find out. So my name is Tracy McRae. I'm currently the president of San Francisco Police Officers Association. I've been a cop, uh, it's gonna be almost 34 years. Is crime on the rise here? Certain types of crime are on the rise. So robberies, right? They are up about 12 to 15%. I mean, you don't walk around with your cell phone out because it's finna get snatched. Uh, so Prop 47 lowered the threshold uh, for certain crimes like petty theft, right? Prop 47, it reduces certain drug and theft crimes from felony charges to misdemeanors. Before, if you stole anything over $400, that would be a felony charge or Prop 47. So now you can steal up to $949.99 and you just get a ticket if you're caught. It's a citation, so it's akin to you running a stop sign, I pull you over and I give you a traffic citation. And you're either one of two people where you're like, oh shit, I got a ticket, or you're like, I don't give a shit. Back in November of, what was that, 2022, people just ransacked into the Louis Vuitton and just made off. That made national news. Stunning video. This is going viral in San Francisco. Brazen thieves emptied out the Louis Vuitton store in Union Square. So not a good look for the city because hey, we would love for people to come here and visit and spend their money because tourism has always been our bread and butter. Welcome to the most beautiful city in the world. San Francisco, I don't mean Frisco. But unfortunately, this past week, they hit Burberry, they hit Fendi, they hit Gucci. Lieutenant McRae was making one thing clear. There was a massive organized retail boosting squad that was currently active in the immediate vicinity of Union Square. So I walked around Union Square and tried to find someone who might know something. Within 15 minutes, I identified the culprits. The Finesse Mall Gang, a graffiti and shoplifting crew known for spray painting public buses and stealing shit from Union Square. Anybody could go to a store, grab some shit and run out. It's about technique, it's how you do it. Hey, it's a lot going on though. You got the, you got the drug sales, you got motherfuckers getting shot, car burglaries, you know, you name it, that's what's going on. That's how we get it, man, that's, that's all we know. Getting it out the mud, getting out these dirty streets. Tenderloin, but we all locked in over here, man. We got a face car valid all through these trenches. How'd that make you feel? Man, I'm ready to do it again. <laughs> Y'all can cover the face on this one, right? Yeah, of course, okay, bro. Shit. Is that a good, like, adrenaline boost? Oh, right? yeah, absolutely. My heart pumps. Hey, look, let's go over here with it. We got the cops right there, you feel me? Hi, Channel 5. Hi, Channel 5. How do, how do you guys uh, make your money and support yourself out here? Hey, look, before all these before all these niggas was doing this run out the store shit, we was walking out the store. We was having them say, y'all have a good day. Finesse them all, that's what it is, man. It's FBA shit, if man. If you were to guess, how much merchandise do you think you've been able to boost numerically in, in the past couple years? Oh, oh God, God, everything, bro. Yeah. Probably like a, a hundred ball, maybe? Maybe a little more than a yeah, hundred ball. About you that, know what I'm saying? Bro. A little more than a hundred ball. hundred thousand. Yeah, a hundred thousand. Hey, look, there's not a shop in Union Square that we haven't hit for at least 10 bands. <laughs> All them designer stores, Montclair, Louis, Gucci, uh, Sunglasses Hut. We were smacking them, bro. Uh, I, used, I used to go to the Apple store and take the motherfucking display phones, bro. It's called Gorilla Boosting, bro. You go in there and come out, bro. Bare face and everything, no mask, you feel me? I'm in there, I'm getting out, bro, you know what I'm saying? Hey, honestly, I done splashed during the daytime, you feel me? I ain't even gonna cap. I done splashed over there on Lombard. Tourists over here talking about, oh my God, if y'all don't knock it off, you know what I'm saying? This is regular out here. Is that a crazy boosting story? 
Crazy Busa. Oh, oh my God. Oh, which time, bro? Which time? Shit. Uh, I was, on, was going to Twin Peaks, and uh, there was somebody parked up on the side trying to, you know what I'm saying, take some pictures and shit like that. Well, we end up splashing they shit. Oh, my God. Get down, get down. Stay in here. Get down, get down. Call Ashley, call Ashley. Stay down. The next day, motherfuckers on the news. Team of gunmen rob a film crew in front of terrified witnesses and see one of the robbery suspects pistol whips one of the victims. Tripod legs are hanging outside of the rear passenger window and as they drive away. You feel me, but can't speak too much on that because, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Tell them the Gucci story. Okay, so one time we went to the Gucci store, RP my nigga Fury, man, FBA, Fury, man. man. FBA, we well, went to Fury, Fury, man. The search continues this morning for the gunman who robbed another high-end designer store in San Francisco's Union Square. So I stole two $2,000 purses. He stole a tracksuit, alarms and everything. My nigga Fury stole a couple things, too. And he got alarms all through the Gucci uh, tracksuit walking I'm in. Beeping, bro. Bam, bam, bam. And we're just everywhere we walk, bro, in the store beeping. The motherfuckers knew he was up to no good. By the time they come up, like, sir, you need any help? Nah, I just need help to show me where the exit's at now. I'm, I'm about done here. We walked out with like ten, fifteen thousand dollars worth of shit, bro. Are you guys worried about consequences, like from the police out here? What? San Francisco doesn't believe in crime. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Shout out the DA though. Oh, shout out uh, London Breed too. Shout out London Breed. And once the arrests are made, um, we are hopeful that our DA will prosecute. Hey, I did time in San Francisco, but never like stayed more than like a couple, like a couple weeks. You know what I'm saying? We've been doing consequences since Juvenile Hall. Graduated to prison. Most definitely. Still out here, same shit, same environment. I think they don't give a fuck. Do you think that's changing the way that like businesses decide to move their shit here? Oh yeah, for sure. That's why they're all closing down the market. Since the start of the year, the city has seen the exit of more than a dozen national retailers from the downtown area. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys feel bad about that? Or? Absolutely not. Welcome to the Bay. Straight I can't up. Call Welcome it. to I the Bay, bro. Welcome to the city. You know and, and, and I hope when you executives come over here to finalize the, the, the paperwork to sign to close the store, you should get splashed, my nigga. Welcome to the Bay Area, bro. It's just what we do. We do it all. Splash it. Line them up. Stay no. gang. We do all that, bro. No. Trap. Bip City. Everything, bro. Out the bitch. You name it, we doing it. Out the bitch. <laughs> Working with our Hondos. You know, this, this, this baby Honduras right here, man. You feel me? Shocking discovery in California's drug trade. Hundreds of San Francisco's dealers are coming to our state from just one place. The small town of Syria Valley. It's in the middle of Honduras. You can see in these pictures the many homes in the Syria Valley are built with images of familiar Bay Area icons. <laughs> I work at La Cocina up the street. It's about 35 40 hondos out in front of that motherfucker every day selling dope. Hey, hey. Bruh, what the fuck? What you want, bruh? Don't be recording all of that up in my face, bruh. Get that shit up on, hey. bruh. Don't fuck so around like that, bruh. The hondos are Hondurans and uh, the, they're posted on every block. Police roll right past. They don't get out. They don't roll their window down. They don't say shit. They just <laughs> look at them. Keep going. What's going on with the Honduran gangs here? Uh, as far as I know it, you get a lot of like young people that are trying to cross into the country, and so they get sponsored. You get a lot of Mexican cartels that are offering basically protection to these young people, and then once you're here, you're working for them. This is a very important part of the story. I had a chance to speak with a couple Hondos, but I did so off camera. Putting them on camera could put them and their families at serious risk. Here's how it works, and here's why they're in San Francisco. Let's start. Jesus, ok, tai viena ta įdomiai, skaitėk, sumažino, nu, nu kiek tam buvo, jeigu tu pavokdavai iki 400 kažką, tai tipo pochui būdavo, nu ne pochui, bet jeigu virš 400 jau fellow nečiaržiu, nu tipo paudžiakas, aš tai pasiuminu čia mažu. Bet, bet tada tas prop cam 7, koks ten buvo pakeitė tą, ten buvo neiki štukos. Ir tada tiesiog iš karto įeini, nupysni, nu ir ką baudagavai. Ta bauda, nežinau, ten kokio didžio bus, bet nu, tipo, kaip, kaip parking ticket, tipo, whatever. Ha. Aš galiu galvoti, plėt. Nu, turbūt tie, kur prieimė tą įstatymą, gal, žinojo, kad um, nėra gera idėja, bet greičiausiai buvo, bl, nu, vėlgi, gal ne, nežinau, bet pateisinimas turbūt, kad mažiau blogas variantas iš kažkokio bandymo kažką daryti, I don't know, bet skamba kaip tragiška idėja, bet vėlgi, plėt, yra įdomi problema, kur susiduri. Visų įkaleimą nepasodinsi, tipo, literali nėra vietos, literali tiek darbuotojų neturi, kad visus pasodinti ir prižiūrėti paskui, nu tai kažkaip tu turi tą problemą spręst ir čia greičiausiai buvo vienas tas bandymas problemą spręst, bet nepanašu, kad čia sėkmingas buvo. Bet tipo, jo, kaip spręst, kai tiek, nu, nes reikia ne tik, kad šitų kaleimo vietų, 
bet kai nuojajos išlaikyti visų pirma. Tai tad dar reikia jo šitų prokurorų galų galę, nu visą sistemą turi ir kai tu turi teisti tūkstančius ar ten šimtus tūkstančių, tarkim, už vat tokius dalykus, nu tai tada sakai, žiūrėk, dvai panaikinam tą, nu ir jo, kelios parduotuvė, žinai, užsidarys, bet mes bendrai paėmų sutaupysim. Ir gal iš tokio skaičiavimo ir būna vat tokio situacijo, bet nežinau, nu čia tiesiog tragedija situacija. Hmm. Nes galų galė, nu jo, kas dabar vat kuriant bėžinį varmį San Franciską sakys, what the fuck? Start with the history of fentanyl. Fentanyl is produced by China or in China, depending on... Beje. Kalbant apie tą būtent, čia dabar apie tą pasakos, prisimant, kai mes žiūrėjom Baideno paskutinę kalbą, paskutinį susitikimas su Xi Jinpingu Kinijos. Vienas iš tų punktų, kurie kalbėjo ir aptarė, tai realiai ir buvo. Sutarimas, bent jau, nu, žodžiai, sakė, sutarimas tarp jų, ten vieni kitiem pasižadėjo maždaug biškai nuramint viską, bet Kinija pažadėjo pamėgint spręsti, nu, su Amerikai kažkaip tą problemą, kad, nu, uždarytų ar kažkaip, priverstų biškai uždaryti tos fentanilio eksportus ir nuvežimus į Ameriką. Nes čia dabar apie tai būtent ir pasakoja. Čia buvo vienas iš tų dalykų. Tai, nu, gal ir net nesažininga sakyti, kad nieks nieko nesprendžia. Nes va Baideno administracija su Kinija net bendrauja, kad eina iki pačio sorso, iš kur ateina ir mėgina su jais biškai palaikyti. Nes ta pati Kinija, ar jinai gali žinoti, kad iš jų varo jiems pohui? Jeigu varo į ten tą Ameriką jobaną, Nu, tipo, you know, bet vat kai tokius dylus darai, kažką gauni, kažką gauni atgal, kažką tau pasiūlo, žinai, ir bet jo, ir ten Bidenas gavo bent jau tą susitarimą, aš žinau, ten kokios sąlygos ir kaip, bet tipo su to, kad kinė, tipo, biškai kovotų labiau. Tai, ne. Geopolitics, man, oh boy. On how you look at it. They sell most of their product legally to American pharmaceutical companies like Johnson and Johnson, who owns the patent to fentanyl patches, fentanyl candy, and fentanyl liquid IV drip. Fentanyl is used in operating rooms and to control pain after surgery. Much like Nike, Apple, and other American corporations looking to save money by outsourcing production to countries with lax labor regulations, American pharmaceutical companies literally procured trillion dollar contracts with Chinese medicine manufacturers to produce cheap generics of many of our favorite drugs today. Percocet. Oxycot. Xanax. Promethazine and codeine, a.k.a. Dirty Sprite. Last but not least, the man of the hour, fentanyl. There's not really any music about fentanyl, yet. Fentanyl is going to bind to your opioid receptors in your central nervous system. Well, at some point, these Chinese manufacturers realized there was more eager clients besides Johnson & Johnson. And the coolest thing about these new clients? They don't even need you to actually make the fentanyl. All they need is the analog precursors, sodium borohydrate and chloride. They bake it down, bag it up, and smuggle it into the U.S. And these companies were the Sinaloa Cartel and the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, two billion dollar Mexican drug empires competing for control of smuggling routes into the United States. And so it began. Drug overdoses are killing more Americans now than at any time in history. 100,000 people died. At 22 years old, Sawyer Post made a mistake. He tried Percocet, a prescription painkiller. The Percocet itself was laced with fentanyl. Unfortunately, uh, my son. Krista says she believes this was Trinity's first time trying drugs. Nine-year-old died from a fentanyl overdose. Every day, 200 Americans die from a fentanyl overdose. Since 2018, which is around when these American-funded Chinese manufacturers began working with the cartels in Mexico, that number is now over 260,000 people. In San Francisco, about two people die from an overdose every day. Here is some incredibly sad footage of a husband handing over his wife's body to the San Francisco medical examiners. Bye-bye, 
Can I give you a hug? Oh, here, man, thank you. I can't take it anymore. Dude, you didn't even know Vicky, did you? No. Now, what you have to understand is that from a distribution standpoint, the current fentanyl crisis is much different than America's last significant drug crisis, which was the crack cocaine epidemic in the 1980s. Oof. Back then, cartels and possibly the CIA sold directly to American gangs to distribute in places like Los Angeles, Miami, and New York City. However, over time, the cartels realized that it was much more profitable to import their own dealers into the United States from impoverished third world nations. This is what's going on with the Honduras. The cartel scouts in the slums of Central America and finds working age males in poverty. They promise them free, safe passage up north into the United States. Now, we at Channel 5 may or may not have recently gone to Latin America to follow in the footsteps of one of these Honduran migrants. But I will tell you this. Shortly after being smuggled across the U.S. border, many of these Hondurans are driven straight to San Francisco, given a package of fentanyl, given a street corner, and told they must sell it to pay off their coyotes. Anyways, more from the FEA gang. Just catch a real quick tag right here. You guys going to the dead show? Yeah. Have fun. I will. As I stood on Market Street with FEA, a group of middle schoolers from Oakland approached us with backpacks full of candy for sale. Right, you take cash out, little brother? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure watching I got like What the hell is this? At first, I wasn't sure what was going on, but my new friend broke it down. Yeah, so behind us right here, man, you know what I'm saying? We got these kids. I say about 12 to 15, 16. You heard one of them, he say from Oakland, so they hop on bar, come out here. This is Money Zone. Like I said, I ain't from out here either. Everybody comes out here from other cities. Rarely will you find someone from the city that's actually out here hustling. Basically what they did, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna speak too deep on it, but come here with some backpacks, go to a store, fill it up with candy, walk down market, and the tourists, nine times out of 10, they gonna buy it. They think, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, okay, look at these kids. They're trying to, they got the little hustle going on here. We respect it. They could be out here stripping shit, this and that, so we're gonna support it. You know what I'm saying? Little do they know, but then, you know, you, you graduate. Now you figure out about bipping. Now you figure out about house licks. Now you figure about playing with guns. Now you, now you start, ex, you know what I'm saying? You expand your horizon, you feel me? Bro, it ends up how me and my nigga Dre's ended up, bro. You, you start going to juvenile hall, and then you go to county jail, and then you go to prison. He's supporting the young niggas, because we used to do some shit like that, too. The escalation of crime is pretty interesting. Oh, it is. You know, they start looking up to the wrong kind of things, too. Like, they look up to my nigga right here, you feel me? Bape outfit, you know, off-white belts, Jordans. That's the ultimate goal is, I want to be out here saucy. You know what I'm saying? There's no talking to the young generation either. They don't want to hear it, because I didn't want to hear it. Is it possible to, like, stop people from going down this road? <sighs> Not really, because if you want it, you're going to get it. Yeah. I was the same way. <laughs> you know, I was going to juvenile hall, motherfuckers was trying to preach this and preach that. And What you going to do when you're making no money and you're dropping out of high school? Got a baby on the way with your lady. She don't understand you a little crazy. You can't even stop. You're stealing from your parents and running the from the cops. Yeah. Let me keep it real. Take a moment. Look back. Every kid's got a dream that it wasn't be a drug addict. If you want to be high, be a hope dealer. I don't want to hear none of it. You feel me? I don't want to hear you with oh, you guys. Fuck. Change your life. Toki paklusel tampen narkomanas instantly. What the fuck was that? And this and that and what it leads to. Like, I ain't tripping, bro. What are your aspirations for your life? Be honest. Me? Shit, I'm trying to get it together now, man. I've spent way too many years fucking up. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting close to 30 now, bro. And it's just trying to get into a union or something like that. That's the, that's the plan right now, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm in the process of that, bro. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of behind the scenes with, 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 the, with this shit. You feel me? This is just... Damn, you guys bought hella candy. What the fuck? You see how much candy they got? It's, just, it's not even about the candy, man. It's, it's just the support. The I don't even want the candy. You know what I mean? You got to support. Shit, I'm about to head back to Santa... But uh, my nigga's going to be out here. Pleasure meeting you, bro. My new friends from FEA said they had to go back to Santa... But I wanted to keep checking out the streets of the Tenderloin. So they linked me up with their friend named Antoine, who is a couple blocks away. Oh, hey, what's up with my loved one? I'm gonna tell you like this, man. I done seen everything in San Francisco. The only thing I ain't never seen, a bitch that I need in a turtle with speed, nigga. On everything I love, nigga. Yeah. Bippin' shit is going bananas, nigga. Look, when I say bananas, bananas, nigga. On everything, nigga. I swear to God, I quit my... We ain't gonna get into all that, but just know. If your cousin show up into your house at 3 in the morning with a duffel bag and he happy, he did his thug thizzle that evening, you feel me? And it's a little petty crying, a little slap on the wrist, you feel me? I'm talking about you go, go sit up in county about three, four days, depending on what kind of prize you got. They gonna let you right about that motherfucker. Motherfuckers get right back up in that motherfucker. Petty crime. Sparky's on the lease. Top and 
pull that motherfucker right back. Spark plugs and break a window quicker than a bip on my mama. So can you tell us where we're at and what's going on? And we is on 8th and Market, the notorious 8th and Market. You can find everything down here on 8th and Market, from uh, hygiene bottles to fentanyl to bikes to wheelchairs. If you want a wheelchair, you come down here and get a wheelchair. So if you want some apple juice or canned goods, you get it for the low. You ain't got to go to Food Code Safeway. Come right here. Jacob Shibashevsky, who owns Fermentation Lab on Market Street, says crime in the mid-market area has worsened post-pandemic. I wish, I wish there was more more that could be done. So it's cool with me because I've been in San Francisco all my life. But for people that just moving out here, it's starting to, it's really hurting them because they're, they're not used to this. So it's like the people that's gentrifying and coming into our neighborhood and these new tech company buildings and stuff are the ones that's complaining. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, go back home. I'm okay with that. Uh, shit, I'm tired of San Francisco being packed. Go ahead, close this motherfucker down. Let us get back to who we was before. <laughs> People that's been here, we okay with this. This has been going on before our time. This has been going on for years and decades. It's just visible now because they don't have nowhere to put them. Because if you look at documentaries from 1980s in San Francisco, they've been doing this. This has been going on. The rush is what got me. Not, not, I'm not gonna say we cool with it, but we understand it. We we see how it goes. We okay with that. This, no. this guy's doing a nitrous balloon. You think he's here for the Grateful Dead show, or you think he's a homeless guy? Uh, you here for the Grateful Dead show, or are you living on the streets? All gas, no break. Hell all yeah. Gas, no oh, break. There you go. <laughs> I think at this point, it's important to note that this entire documentary was pretty much filmed in a six block radius that composes one particular neighborhood in the city. This mm -hmm. neighborhood is called the Tenderloin. Since the 1890s, it's been nicknamed the Tenderloin because it was suggested that police who patrolled the area receive additional hazard pay bonuses. Also supplement their income with, with bribes from local brothels, gambling halls, speakeasies, and so forth. And ultimately receive such a good payout, they could afford Tenderloin steaks for dinner every night. The point I'm making is that for over a hundred years, cops in Frisco have turned a blind eye to crime in the Tenderloin. Much like the downtown east side in Vancouver, BC, Canada, or the Kensington area of North Philadelphia, they consider it to be a containment policy. If they allow certain things like open air drug markets to occur in a specific contained zone, then... The Wire, serial į gyvenimą realybėje, nu, dabar net šiuo šio laiku, ką ten smegino padaryti vienas tas, nu, policijos generolas, aigė, ten, nežinau, tai visą Baltimore drug trade'ą suvaryti ten į, nu, jų west side'ą suvaryti tris tokias vietas, kur maždaug, kur policija nežiūrės, bet tada visas kitas vietas išsaugo techniškai. Tai čia realiai tas pats principas, lygiai tas pats. Crime is unlikely to occur in more affluent nearby neighborhoods. The same is true in San Francisco. Just a stone's throw away from the Tenderloin are very affluent neighborhoods like Knob Hill, Pacific Heights, and North Beach. These neighborhoods have a high police presence and low crime rates. Anyways, that's a story for another day. I wanted to check out some of the open air drug markets that were allegedly in the Tenderloin. Antoine agreed to show me the biggest one, but he was a bit nervous about filming. So what is this block up here that we're about to walk to? Uh, this the block. <laughs> It's the block. If you uh, you gonna see, but that's the block. You feel me? But it's just a popular block where things happen. <laughs> things happen for downtown. You know, like we we finna go check in with them. You know, I'm gonna let them let y'all know what's going on. I passed through, but I don't know enough, you know, to be right here. But I'm gonna let them go. You feel me? And do how they do when they do it. So what's this block called again? The Woo Block. W O O Block. I'm not from here. I don't hang out down here, but I know about it because I'm a San Franciscan. And just know. This block get a little, little crazy at times, depending on what's going on, you feel me? It's a go-to block, one-stop shop. If you want to get something, they're going to have something, everything. That's why I said I'm going to let the Hawk Twins let you know. What's going on, y'all, man? Y'all made it to the city, man, where it's pretty at us. Oh, just shit, yeah. block, man. We is trapping over here. Oh, shit, yeah. Kaž kada buvo pasitė, broli, ar kažkur kitur aš jas mačiau? Ar mojį šaunės jie visi vienodį, nežinau. Selling weed, slapping booties and making movies, man. I can never switch. I can never snitch, I can never fuck with niggas acting like a bitch I can never fall, could never be a hoe, I ain't never been a trick, I forever get the dough I can never switch, I can never snitch, I can never fuck with niggas acting like a bitch I can never fall, could never be a hoe, I ain't never been a trick, I forever get the dough Until I get a million dollar deal, I'm still gonna sell dope on this hill, man How would you guys describe the current state of San Francisco? I mean, shit, I mean, it's a... Jo, 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 Channel 5 tą patį darė, aš sakau, kad aš juos atpažįstu. Jo, jo, jis sudėjęs buvo.
That could be true. Lover boy, they bitch coming with us. You know, they get half twins. They don't want to get loved all the time. Oh, take care of them. Yo, yo, I should be your video, so nice you, boy. A bunch of shit going on, but this shit ain't nothing new. Hey, man, you know, it's just, everything that's going on right now been going on. It's just yeah, more so like eight one eight. They making it easier for motherfuckers. You know, they giving out needles. They giving out shit. You know, like it's part of San Francisco's public health strategy called harm reduction, taking steps to reduce the negative consequences of using drugs. This is a lot of it. What is it used for? This is used so they can put their fentanyl on here, and then they burn it and they smoke it through a straw. She that is passed the law. They don't take they don't take you to jail for stealing no more. You get cited and released. They damn near making it easy. You know what I mean? Like, so that's why everyone off dope come to the city. Again, it's easy to be on dope. The police don't give a fuck because they ain't gonna take no one no dope to jail because they ain't gonna make no money off of it. They would rather take me and Tyler to jail because they know we gonna bail out. They are gonna make some money off of us. <laughs> Yeah, they don't take crackheads to jail because it's no money in it. They don't have no money that I could pay no fines. Yeah. My son go to school right here. I, I take my son to school and he, and, the, and he looking at the niggas, uh, the dude smoking dope right here. You know what I mean? So if you live here, it is kind of a problem because you, your kids are raised up watching people smoking dope on the side of the street, and then that ain't cool. It is not good, you know. So they, I feel like they should, yeah, they should give them a certain area where they can smoke dope at. It's a disease, motherfuckers off heroin and shit. If they stop doing hair on, they will die. So it's more so like instead of killing them, we're going to give them some clean needles and, or they're going to catch AIDS, you know, and be out here, you know. What do you do, Vadina? It's harm reduction. And shit, it's very sunk policy. No, shit, it's very logical. It's very sunk to pay for it. No, I'm not sure if I'm going to pay for it. Harm reduction. Because it's really, you know, you know, Padarė, kad lengviau vat, mums būtų narkomanais tapti dėl to har... Kaip, nu, kad vartuoti lengviau būtų, gal ne tapti narkomanais, bet vartuoti lengviau būtų, vat, ten ir Adatas duoda ir viską. Ir, vat, pamato koks Orlauskas ten ar jo publika, va, matot, laisvės partija, ką nori padaryti, nu, tipo, ok, bet čia, vat, ir mes matuojam ir skaičiuojam, tas harm reduction nėra idealu. Mes norėsime, kad narkotikų, narkomanų ten ligonių visokių nebūtų pasaulį niekur, ok. Bet va tada kokia alternatyva, ar paskui mokėti užgydymo visų šimtą kartą daugiau, ar kad jie ten lavonai gatvėse būtų, nu taip ar tu renkės ir darai tos iš paskaičiamo realiai sprendimus ir jeigu, aišku, čia unikali vietos su unikaliom problemom, bet realybėj ta idėja yra, kad kuo mažiau būtų tų neigiamų poveikių, tada ir vadinas tas harm reduction galų galė kad jeigu tu ten vartoji, kad bent jau neužsiverstum ir panašiai ir dar didesnė našta, paskui nebūtum ten šiaip, nu, valstybė visai, ar ten miestui, ar whatever. Jo, bet kaip lengva kažką biškį netaip padaryti irgi. Damn. Just standing right here, they just drove past 4, 5D. They should be up there, but they down here. The police, huh? They'd rather, they rather pull up on me talking about, we the real twins. It was some twin police. They pulled up on us like, we the real twins. Take your real twin ass up the street and go do some work. Channel 5 Live Worldwide, Hollywood and Vine. Rek, okay, gerai, iš tikro, tokia dokumentika gaunas, realiai. Palandos beveik ilgo, geras, geras. Kingman is me. 